twice in one year. We've got the details from the sheriff. And police found a man beaten to death this morning while the suspect is claiming self-defense. So good rain chances head our way by midweek and then maybe a little bit of wintry weather to deal with on Thursday. We've got the latest update coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. And we begin with an increase in COVID-19 restrictions that could be coming for Bear County if hospitalization numbers don't improve. That's according to Mayor Ron Nuremberg. In a tweet over the weekend, the mayor wrote, quote, if at least 15% of our trauma service areas hospitalizations are COVID-19 patients for seven straight days, businesses will need to drop to 50% of max occupancy, end quote. Today would mark day seven if the percentage didn't improve. Here's a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers in Bear County. The total confirmed case and now sits at 112,218. The death toll sits at 1,510, while now 8,000 people are hospitalized. The last time we had that many was back on July 29th. 299 people are in the ICU and 159 are on ventilators. 17% of staffed hospital beds are available. Now we should find out what the percentage of trauma service area hospitalizations are this evening during the mayor's brief Briefing on KSAT 12 News at 6. It happens right about 613. A Bear County Sheriff's deputy is in jail this noon after he was arrested overnight for allegedly assaulting his spouse. And that's not the first time he's been arrested for assault. Sarah Costa brings us the latest and why Sheriff Javier Salazar says the deputy should have been fired several years ago. It's very disturbing, quite frankly. Uh, he knocked her to the ground and kicked her in the face. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar appalled by the details of the arrest of a Bear County Sheriff's deputy who allegedly assaulted a family member for a second time this year. 31 year old John Paul Garza was arrested early this morning and is being charged with continuous violence against a family member and a violation of a protective order. Both are third degree felonies. The victim, partially clothed and had blood on her, ran to a neighbor's house for help. The victim's clothes became soiled with blood and uh, Godsai, it appears, uh, forcibly removed her clothing uh, in an effort to destroy evidence of the assault that had occurred, namely blood evidence that was on her clothing. In February, Garza was arrested on a charge of assault bodily injury married. When officers arrived at that scene in North Bear County back in February, Garza had fled. He was eventually located and arrested. He was placed on administrative leave in February and is still in the process of being terminated. Garza was hired by BCSO in 2012. Salazar says in 2013, Garza was investigated for a separate incident at the jail. He says under the previous administration, Garza was suspended for 10 days after inappropriate amount of force on an inmate. That to me just seems like somebody that should never have been working here in the first place since that point. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. The Bear County Medical Examiner is working to identify a man who police found beaten and dead last night. The incident happened at a student housing complex at UTSA near Loop 1604 West, not far from Babcock Road. Police say two men got into a fight that started in the apartment and then made its way into the parking lot. When officers arrived, they found the man on the ground with severe head injuries. The other man involved told police he hit him in self-defense, which caused him to fall backwards and then hit his head on the pavement. As of now, it's unclear if that man will face charges. SAPD believes racing was the cause of a multi-vehicle crash on Loop 410 that left several people injured, including two children. The crash happened just before 1130 last night on Loop 410 near the Callahan Road exit. Details of what caused the crash unknown, but officials say eight vehicles were involved. A Chevy Tahoe was hit first, followed by a black sedan, and then the pileup began. Officials say no one was seriously injured and all victims were treated at the scene. Leon Valley Police investigating an overnight crash that sent one motorcyclist to the hospital. The incident happened just after midnight in the 5400 block of Grissom Road, not far from Timber Hill. San Antonio police say the motorcyclist lost control and crashed into a curb. When officers arrived on scene, they found him unresponsive on the sidewalk. He was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. Investigators continue to comb through the debris of the Christmas Day bombing that rocked downtown Nashville as they try to figure out why a 63 year old man detonated the device. This is more witnesses are coming forward to tell their experience of the bombing. ABC's Andrea Fujihi has more from New York. 
Today, investigators are calling the Christmas Day blast that destroyed parts of downtown Nashville a suicide bombing. Authorities reviewing new traffic camera footage showing the moment of the explosion. Shortly after 1 a.m. Christmas morning, this RV was seen parked outside the AT&T building. Law enforcement trying to determine if it may have been the intended target. Investigators say 63-year-old Anthony Warner was the only casualty and are now looking into his psychiatric and medical history for clues to a motive. He was present when the bomb went off and that he perished in the bombing. <laughs> A recording playing from the RV warning residents they had 15 minutes to evacuate. And today, the six officers who got people out of their homes hailed as heroes. She said, OK, let me get my kids. And that kind of just like put my heart up in my throat. The Rasmussen family made it out just in time. As we're driving away, um, this massive explosion. More than 40 buildings were damaged in the explosion. One collapsed. It felt like I only took three steps and then the music stopped and as I'm walking back toward Toppy now, I just see orange and then I hear a loud boom. Following the blast, agents seen carrying out bags of evidence from a home associated with Warner. Multiple law enforcement sources telling ABC News investigators are seriously exploring whether Warner may have been motivated, at least in part, by a paranoia over 5G cellular technology. Court records show the home now being searched was owned by Warner, but the deed was recently transferred to a woman in California. Investigators say they're now looking into whether there was any possible connection. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, we're continuing our coverage on the blood supply in the area. Right now, we do not have a seven-day supply of blood of any type. According to the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center, a seven-day supply is considered adequate for the community. Type O blood is barely above the three-day supply with its minimum, while other blood types are at a five-day supply. STBTC is taking blood donations by appointment only. And it is time to reflect on just how wild of a year it was this year, 2020. Wednesday, KSAT 12 will be airing our end of year special from how the pandemic has affected our viewers to even us here at the station to the biggest news, sports and weather stories. So be sure to tune in and watch this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Still ahead, we take a look back at all the interesting people we've met this year on our segment. What's up, South Texas? And the Spurs make an announcement about fans in the stands. It won't happen for a while. We'll have more details on that coming up in sports. And the Cowboys with a big win yesterday. It's that time to reflect back on how the community of South Texas has kept us going despite the pandemic. We've all gone through frustrations, restrictions, and losses. But you continue to spread love here in our community. Here's our Jaffney Gray with What's Up South Texas Year in Review. Like my ice hockey skills, the year 2020 has been on a struggle bus for all of us. So much so, you just wanted it to stop at times. But you know who didn't stop? All of you. Keeping South Texas filled with fun, artistic masterpieces, and service to others. Bringing that old school feel back to the barber industry. You kept us smiling. Does this look good? <laughs> I'm just kidding. And you kept us inspired. We've been feeding ever since COVID started. Because of you, we saw what it was like to go up, up, and away through small aircraft. Remind me of Stevie Wonder. I am Stevie Wonder. Go, 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 go. We learned Labradors could dive like humans, and we were reminded that despite obstacles like blindness, you can still play ice hockey, swim and play instruments, and even continue lawn services. You can't let no obstacles, like you say, uh, uh, get in your, uh, in your way. Speaking of which, let's not forget about Braille, the blind deaf therapy dog that helps children with special needs in Morgan's Wonderland. He's the one that makes the difference. We saw a photographer passionate about families and one passionate about birds. We saw entrepreneurial teens creating a website to feed the homeless, a 12-year-old makeup artist who gives makeup tutorials for adults and children, and an 8-year-old mathematician who tutored elementary kids during quarantine. On What's Up South Texas, you showed us real issues like addictions, but you also showed us together we have the strength to recover and help others in the process. There's not a thing as rock bottom. If you're alive and breathing, you can always go up. There's always hope. 
it's never too late. Another real issue you brought attention to in our community, PTSD. This dog trainer was on it, turning dogs said to be euthanized into service animals for veterans. And I do it to give back to my country. We also entered the musical world with musicians who teach military veterans how to play and write music. And we met a ballet couple who shares their love for the dance with the community. We met a nurse who removes unwanted tattoos. And a woman who has dedicated her life to making children's clothes for charities. 2020 has been a roller coaster ride, but through it all, you taught us how to have faith. It just shows me not to give up. And how to push forward for that. I mean, the last uh, last few days have been just incredible. We do have more clouds today, so there is that. We're going to have some changes this week for sure. Some showers and storms. Likely by the time we get into Wednesday, the aquifer down three tenths of a foot to 663 even. In your pollen count, Mountain Cedars high 3,610, mold is low at 450. We'll talk about those rain chances and the potential for a little bit of wintry weather coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. All right, Justin, you know I do not like to put you on the spot, but I did hear the phrase wintry mix more than once today. I did say it. Okay. I did say it. So right. he, here's the, uh, the issue we have here in the fine line. we got to walk. All I right. think that there is a chance for that in the Hill Country. San Antonio's chances are really pretty low, so I don't want to get anyone's hopes up about snow, okay? But there is the chance there, especially in the Hill Country, and we'll dive into that forecast here in just a second. First, let's go outside. And we've got uh, mostly cloudy skies, a little bit of sun trying to shine through right on downtown. That's a beautiful shot there. Temperature 68 degrees at the airport, 69 Stinson, 71 Kelly, 70 at Randolph. We've got an east southeasterly breeze anywhere from 5 to 15 miles per hour. Could get a little breezy today. We look at the satellite picture. You can see the clouds here are still fairly thick, but there are breaks here and there. So the sun's going to shine through and temperatures will eventually make their way up into the 70s. We're already seeing some of that on the map. 70 at Randolph, 72 New Braunfels, 70 in Seguin, 68 again at the airport. A little bigger picture here where we're seeing more sun, almost full sun now. Carrizo Springs down in Katua getting fairly warm there. 78 down there in Katua, 76 Kennedy, 76 in Victoria. Two points are high. It's humid. Humidity is uh, going to be with us a couple days uh, with dew points in the 60s, and that is translating to a few very light showers. We're seeing that on radar here and there, but this is nothing more than a couple sprinkles that are very quickly working their way off to the north. Let's zoom out and go all the way out to California. This is the storm system that we're going to be watching very closely in the coming days. You see the nice swirl in the atmosphere. This energy will work its way towards Texas. And the thing about this storm system that's a little different than the last few that we've seen is that it's going to dig farther to the south. This gives us better chances for rain and it will move right over top of us, which is significant uh, because we do need rainfall for the year. We're at 19.94, 12 inches below the average. Uh, if we were to end today in the year today, we would be uh, close to the top 20 driest years we've seen on record. So it just gives you an idea there. We certainly do need the rain. Here's how the forecast looks with our computer models here. So let's go to tomorrow morning. We've got some showers, some drizzle around. I think a very similar day to today. We could see a few showers during the afternoon. Wednesday is when things begin to change. We get some showers in the morning. Frontal boundary comes through. We get a good chance of showers and thunderstorms with this front. We could see a couple of strong storms. And then once this front moves through, the temperatures fall off sharply. This is cold air behind this front. And as we go forward in time here to 6 a.m. on Thursday, notice we've got some blue and purple on the map here. Generally in the hill country, places like Junction, Rock Springs, Kerrville, Fredericksburg, it would be a rain snow mix, we think. And it's a little too early to talk about accumulations just yet. There's still some things that have to be uh, put in these models to get us a, a better idea. But that's the general thinking right now. And could we see some flakes as far south as San Antonio? Yes, but we don't think it'll be significant at this point. Something to watch. Again, that'll be Thursday morning and maybe even during the day on Thursday. Uh, as far as uh, thunderstorms go, there is a marginal risk of some stronger storms. 
uh, Wednesday evening as this front comes through, mainly east of San Antonio. So that's the other side to all of this that we've got to watch as well. But certainly some changes. And the, I think the big story here is the rainfall. We need it. Uh, maybe up to an inch if we're lucky here in San Antonio and then some bigger numbers off to the east. Obviously those numbers fall off a little bit as you go west. Forecast for today takes us up to about 74. We'll call for mostly cloudy skies. There is an outside chance of a shower or two today. 30% chance tomorrow. 70% chance of showers and storms on Wednesday. Breezy. There's that chance of some wintry mix or basically a rain snow mix. I think Thursday morning with a 40% chance of some lingering showers on Thursday. I think everything looks good as we welcome in the new year and the New Year's Day sunny high of 57. So 2020 a little yeah. interesting as we finish it out. So basically we're counting on a rain event, but anything else mm, kind of up in the air. Yeah, stay tuned. All right, we like yeah. that. Thanks. See, I didn't put you on the spot. <laughs> Cowboys shooting down the Eagles defense. Ooh, this looked good yesterday. We've got that for you. Plus the Spurs eating up by the Pelicans. Next. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Cowboys season on the line the last two games. Kind of like the playoffs every week. With a win over the Eagles, they still had a chance. Started off rough, though. Dallas D, a no-show early. The Eagles scored a TD on their first two possessions of the game after the read option got them. Then they went through the air, and that got the Cowboys. As Jalen Hurts to Deshaun Jackson, 81-yard touchdown. Added a little salt to the wound. A little somersault for you. That's his first touchdown of the season. Sean Lee letting his teammates on defense know just how he feels about the situation. All right, second quarter, Andy Dalton. Michael Gallup on the slant. Splits the defenders, gets upfield, 21 yards, 14-10. Still in the second. Dalton again to Gallup. He avoids a tackler and then turns on the speed. He's going down the sideline, 55 yards before he's finally knocked out of bounds. That was worth a field goal. And now it's a one-point game. How about more Gallup on the sideline? Great control. Got the touchdown. Nice that right there. Look at that. And you talk about control. Watch this one. Yeah, after, yeah, okay, yeah, he's the best. Yeah, we know, we know. Where, where's, this, where's one that's better? How about this, C.D. Lamb? Woo-hoo! C.D. Lamb gone. That was a huge one right there. And then there is Mr. Cooper. Amari Cooper gets in on the act. The Cowboys had three 50-plus plays in yesterday's game. They had three all season up until yesterday. And this is the end of it. Jalen Hurts picked off in the end zone. That stopped the drive at the end. And then still in the fourth quarter, Jalen Hurts, boom, fumble. Cowboys recover. That one hurts. And then CeeDee Lamb, handoff. That'll put the capper on it. The Eagles fall. Cowboys win. They needed it. So now the Eagles are out of the playoffs. The Cowboys are still in the playoffs because Washington lost. So here's your final. From Dallas yesterday, they beat the Eagles 37 to 17. Cowboys six and nine, still in playoff hunts. When you can spread it around and, and guys are making plays all over the field, it, you know, it obviously gives you the chance to go down and score a bunch of points. And you know, fortunately for us, we were able to get that done today. We um, got down early, um, but you know, I think we're. Like I said, very prideful in our work. We understand what we can do on the field when we're really playing at our highest level. And um, it showed there, you know, after we got down. You know, I like how this team's playing football right now. Um, Coach McCarthy said, uh, he said his plan was for us to be, to trend up through the season. And um, and uh, right now we're, we're playing really good football. And uh, I think we're catching, uh, we're catching fire at the right time. Hey, the Spurs announcing no fans in the stands yet. More on that in a second. Spurs on back-to-back. -back. A win at home Saturday last night on the road. New Orleans have a chance at a 3-0 start. First quarter, Yaka Pertle working down low. And then the Spurs are up 18-16 after that one. And the second, Pertle keeps it going. This time from Patty Mills. A little flush there. And San Antonio goes up 24-19. Pelicans find a rhythm midway through the second quarter. Pushing the pace. Lonzo Ball, Zion Williams, 45-39. New Orleans, but the Spurs keep it close. DeMar DeRozan finds Rudy Gay in the corner for the three. San Antonio heads into halftime, trailing 47-45. Things pick up for the Pelicans in the third. Josh Hart drains the three. New Orleans goes up by 14. But the Spurs come all the way back thanks to a 23 run that ends the third and starts the fourth. Keldon Johnson finds Gay on the break. 
That's a good bucket. He had a team high 22 off the bench as the Spurs retake the lead, 85-82, with another Pelicans run. Puts the Spurs down by three in the closing seconds. They can't even get a shot off. DeRozan, DeRozan shot is blocked, and that's how that one ends. Here's your final. Spurs fall 98-95. They dropped 2-1 and one on the season, and no one is making excuses for that loss last night, which is good. As a group, I don't think that we executed offensively very well. Uh, but, you know, that, that's going to happen. Uh, just when I thought we were going to win all 72, you know, are disappointed. You know, we can't, we can't let excuses uh, be the reason of, of us losing. Um, we had a few too many turnovers, um, a little lax to get days ago on transition defense, and we just got to improve. All right, so now the Spurs start a pretty tough stretch, even though they're home. They start a three-game homestand on Wednesday against the Lakers, then Friday against the Lakers, and finally they host the Jazz on Sunday at 6. And we have this news from the Spurs early this morning. They were hoping to have fans in the AT&T Center for that Lakers game Friday night, but today they announced they will not have any fans at home games just yet due to the increase in COVID-19 numbers in our area. No word on a new target date for fans, but as of now, no fans at the AT&T Center. Hey, if you are shopping around for a new mattress, you don't have to break the bank or even set foot in a store. Today at 5, we're sharing the results from a Consumer Reports survey of some of the best mattresses on the market. That's after Entertainment Tonight. We'll be right back. Despite threats to derail bipartisan deal, President Trump signs the COVID-19 relief package and government spending bill anyway to send help to millions of struggling Americans. The move also avoids a government shutdown. Trump signed the deal into law at his private club in Florida. ABC's Andrew Dimbert is in Washington, D.C. with the latest. After threatening that he wouldn't sign the pandemic relief bill into law, President Donald Trump changing his mind again, finally putting pen to paper and signing the $2.3 trillion spending and relief bill, narrowly avoiding a government shutdown by just 24 hours. It really is a disgrace. Trump held onto the bill for nearly a week, letting supplemental unemployment benefits dry up for millions while criticizing the deal his own representatives helped negotiate. But facing mounting pressure from both Democratic and Republican lawmakers, Trump backed down and agreed to the package lawmakers negotiated for nearly eight months, now sending another round of relief to millions of Americans facing financial ruin. I worry and I care about myself and my family. We need COVID relief so bad. Trump's reversal means another round of direct cash payments. The package includes those $600 stimulus checks for Americans making less than $75,000 a year and enhanced unemployment benefits, as well as more funding for small businesses and vaccine distribution. The president expressed his displeasure in the deal in part because he claimed he wanted those stimulus checks to be $2,000, more than three times the amount lawmakers agreed upon. And Democrats are yet still trying to pass a measure to boost those payments. The American people want $2,000. They need it, given the economic crisis. But any measure for more money is likely dead on arrival in the Senate. Overnight, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell saying only the president's leadership has prevented a government shutdown at a time when our nation could not have afforded one. Now, it's unclear how soon Americans can see those stimulus checks, but shortly after Congress reached an agreement, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin suggested it would only take a matter of days for that money to hit bank accounts. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News in Washington. Phase three trials of the Novavax COVID-19 vaccine is underway. The company made the announcement today. This is the fifth company to launch a trial in the U.S. The trial for the vaccine candidate will evaluate safety efficacy and immune response in up to 30,000 participants, 18 ages, ages 18 and up. Similar to Pfizer and Moderna, this vaccine also requires two doses. Novavax says it aims for at least 25% of the participants to be 65 and older, at least 15% black, up to 20% Hispanic and 2% Native American. The trial is being funded by Operation Warp Speed. Overseas, Japan plans to introduce a mobile tracking app for overseas travelers in an effort to stem the spread of COVID-19 before the Tokyo Olympics. All visitors will be required to install an app that uses GPS to track their movements in the country. The app is still in development, but is expected to be released before the Olympics, which is scheduled to begin July 23rd. 
As millions return home from the Christmas holidays, there's new concern about another jump in COVID-19 cases across the nation. The TSA reported their highest travel numbers since the pandemic began. Here's ABC's Gio Benitez with the latest. When it comes to the pandemic, we are seeing unprecedented traveler numbers, both by road and by air. Let's go ahead and start by air, because in just about 11 days, we've seen 9 million people going through TSA checkpoints at U.S. airports. Air travel is still down dramatically when you compare it to last year, but these numbers are still surprising given the rise in COVID cases from coast to coast. Now, this is expected to be a busy week on the road, too. AAA forecasting more than 80 million drivers traveling by car for the year-end holidays. There are some peak travel times to look for in some cities. In D.C., you're going to see the most congestion today around 11.30 a.m. In L.A., Tuesday around 5 p.m. And in Seattle, New York, and Chicago, Wednesday between 4 and 5 p.m. But listen, it could be busy everywhere this coming Sunday, January 3rd. That is when everyone goes home. And it has health officials very concerned about yet another possible surge because of all of these travelers. Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. After only serving a two-month sentence, actress Lori Loughlin is released from prison. She pleaded guilty for her role in the college admissions scam, best known for playing the role Aunt Becky on Full House. Loughlin was charged with conspiracy in May and admitted to paying $500,000 to get her two daughters into the University of Southern California. Upon release, she must also serve two years under supervision, perform 100 hours of community service, and pay a $150,000 fine. Outside with live cam. Oh, it's nice and warm now, but whoo, hold on to your hat and get your boots out. You might need them in a couple of days. Yeah, as we finish out 2020, we do have some colder air on the way. In the meantime, we've had a couple of nice days in a row. T today's going to be nice too, just a little bit more cloud cover, and, we and we've seen a couple showers out there. Let's get to the Doppler radar. You see some of those light returns north of San Antonio. This is not a big deal, just a couple of sprinkles. And we're not looking for a whole lot today on the radar. Uh, looking at the uh, cloud cover, uh, you can see there is quite a bit, mostly cloudy here in San Antonio. We'll see some breaks off and on today, but not a sunny day, not like yesterday. And with those breaks, temperatures should jump up eventually into the 70s. Here's the bigger picture. There is some colder air up across parts of the Panhandle. 41 right now in Amarillo, 46 Wichita Falls. You compare that to mid 70s, even upper 70s down there in Brownsville. It's much warmer down here in South Texas. 74 degrees today, mostly cloudy, just a 20% chance of rain down into the 60s tonight. It does not cool down much at all tonight. But of course, the big story, chance of thunderstorms Wednesday and a chance of a little bit of snow mixing in on Thursday. We've got the latest update coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. So you got your meat eater, pescatarian, vegan, vegetarian, all popular diets that claim to boost your health. But could what you eat make you more susceptible to certain injuries? ABC's Avery Harper sheds light on the new research. They say you are what you eat. Your diet provides vital nutrients for your body to build its cells, tissues, and organs. One type of organ that requires specific vitamins and minerals is your bones. And new research has found that certain diets might make it easier for bones to break. In a study that followed more than 55,000 participants for 17 years, Oxford University researchers looked at whether meat-restricted diets are associated with a higher rate of bone fractures. Participants were separated into one of four groups, meat eaters, pescatarians, vegetarians, and vegans. Vegetarians, vegans, and pescatarians all had higher rates of hip fractures compared to meat eaters, but vegans were also found to have higher rates of leg and vertebral fractures. The team concluded that these meat-restricted diets may not provide vital nutrients needed for proper bone growth and maintenance. There are many reasons you might want to start a new diet, but no matter what you try, it's important to consult your doctor or a nutritionist before making a big change to ensure that you're getting all the nutrients you need. With this Medical Minute, I'm Avery Harper, ABC News. And how about this? Scientists announcing the discovery of 20 new species in the Bolivian Andes. They are also found plants and animals not seen in decades. The findings were revealed in a study published today. The discovery actually happened on a 14-day ex expedition in March of 2017 by the nonprofit environmental group Conservation International. Among the discoveries, a new butterfly, an orchid, a snake, and a frog. 
They can lift the snake out part. They didn't need to find another snake. There's enough of those, aren't there? Hey, still ahead of first over the weekend, Wonder Woman premiered both in the theaters and on HBO Max. That was pretty good for Wonder Woman, too. See how successful the film's opening weekend was. It was pretty successful because something else is going to happen with that one. Holiday shopping hitting new record-setting numbers. How much sales rose despite the pandemic? Coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Welcome to KSAT Deals at KSATDeals.com. Today we have three products for you at great prices. We start with the Retro Game Console. This comes with 620 pre-installed games and two remote controllers. Now the retail price, $99. The KSAT Deals price, $39.99. That's a 60% discount. Moving on to the Aquasonic Toothbrush and Travel Case. This has 40,000 vibrations per minute. Comes with a travel case and eight brush heads. The retail price, $99. $99, case at deals price, $39.99, a 59% discount. Moving on to the ultimate anti-aging duo, the 24 karat gold and B Venom anti-aging beauty bundle, Nature's Botox, retail price, $512, the case at deals price, $39.99, that's a 92% discount. And you can only get these deals at caseatdeals.com along with several others. everyone, this is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Bitcoin continuing its hot streak, the cryptocurrency briefly passing the $28,000 mark on Sunday. Bitcoin first passed the $20,000 mark 11 days ago. Now the digital currency knocking on the door of $30,000. Meanwhile, new data finds that the holiday sales jumped roughly 3% this year as more people shop for furniture and home decor items. Unsurprisingly, the sector gave retail sales a pretty big boost as more people took on home improvement projects amid the pandemic. This year's Sales also saw a surge in online shopping, which rose roughly about 50% in the period between October the 11th and December 24th. And if there's one company that single-handedly got through most of the pandemic for us, it's Zoom. So it should come as no surprise that the company CEO, Eric Yuan, became one of the richest people of the year in 2020. The company is seeing a massive surge in popularity this year. This is people stayed indoors using the video calling service for pretty much everything from holidays to happy hours to school lectures. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado, coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. And today is a huge day to celebrate, especially if you are a chocolate lover, because it is National Chocolate Candy Day. Chocolate which comes from the tropical... Cacao. Ah, you got it. It's been around <laughs> for at least three millennia. The first box of chocolate was made back in 1842. Five years later, sugar was added to create the popular chocolate treats we now know today. And how about this? Americans consume 12 pounds of chocolate each year. Oh, no, they don't. No, that's, that's low. I need a 12 pound bag of M&Ms in a week. What are you kidding me? <laughs> Do you really? Oh, I can. I shouldn't, but they I make 12 pound bags of M&Ms. Those big family size. I don't know how those like two or three pounds in there. Four or five of those, man, you're good. Yeah, we know it was in your stocking, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, 68 degrees so far today. 53 was low this morning, so it didn't get all that cold. The averages are 62 and 40 records are 81 and 19 set back in 1921 and that 1925. We're not going to have any record cold headed our way, but it is going to get cold and some uh, an interesting parts of the forecast as we get into Thursday. We'll take a look coming up. This essay salutes holiday greeting is brought to you by Texas Med Clinic. Season's greetings from Texas Med Clinic at Military in Zasamora. We would like to wish all first responders, school teachers, medical personnel a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Happy Holidays, San Antonio! I will enjoy the warm weather while we can because, ooh, come Wednesday night, big changes on the way. It is going to get cold, but I'll also tell you it's, it's going to last, you know, like one day. Well, and we're back into the mild weather again. It, it's, a, it's a quick shot of cold air, kind of what, what we've been seeing right. most of this fall and winter. Well, we should have our fun for one day anyway, right? But yes, it's, it's, <laughs> it is going to be a little interesting. As we look at the satellite picture, we've got uh, quite a bit of cloud cover out there, mostly cloudy conditions right now across Bear County and San Antonio. Temperatures 
right around 70 degrees. It's mild, it's humid. 64 Bernie stage 71 in Hondo. We're at 77 in Kennedy, 75 Gonzales with some sun shining through there. And then lots of sun as you get out towards Creosote Springs and Catua and the sun just popped out there in Del Rio where you're checking in at 69. Uh, here in San Antonio, 68, humidity at 81% with east southeasterly winds at about 10. And the dew point tracker shows us that we're going to see humid conditions through Wednesday. Then Wednesday, that's when our cold front comes through. And as you might imagine, the dew point falls off as that colder air uh, comes into play. Radar shows a couple showers out there. These are light, nothing more than a couple sprinkles. We're not going to see much today. There could be a few more of these blips on the radar, but uh, nothing of great significance. It's not until we get this storm system a little bit closer that we get better lift. We can see our next storm system on water vapor very clearly here, that counterclockwise spin. And that's what water vapor helps us do. We can see where these spins are in the atmosphere. And this is going to be a big player for us going forward. And that energy is going to move right over Texas. And that's why we're encouraged by our rain chances. And also that also brings in that chance for maybe a little bit of snow mixing in. And I'll show you why here in just a second. Here's what our forecast looks like. We've got uh, some showers tomorrow morning, maybe some more drizzle, some light activity on your Tuesday. Wednesday, here comes our front. Uh, during the morning time, it'll be drizzle and warm and humid. But by the afternoon, it turns much colder. And I think uh, right along the front, we could get some thunderstorms. It's going to be warm enough and humid enough to where we will have the potential for a couple strong storms, mainly east of San Antonio. So that's the first thing we'll have to look out for. And then behind this front, we still get some energy coming through. And it does show uh, still some precipitation hanging around into Thursday. At that point, temperatures are going to start to really cool down in places like the hill country. We could see some snowflakes flying as possible. I, I think it would be one of those situations where we wouldn't see much accumulation because things would melt pretty quickly, but it's a little too early to even be talking about accumulations yet. We're going to have to get a little bit closer. And of course, the big question is, will we see anything here in San Antonio? It's possible we could see a few flakes Thursday morning, but I don't think it'll be of great significance here. Still, it's something we've got to watch and we'll keep you posted for sure as we get again just a little bit closer. And then by the time we get into Thursday night and Friday morning, we welcome the new year. All of this is out of here. Uh, we mentioned the risk for a few strong storms. There is a marginal risk east of San Antonio, this green area here. Uh, that's where we could see the, maybe some gusty winds. There could be a little bit of small hail associated with some of these storms on Wednesday. As far as rainfall goes, and I think this is probably the bigger story, uh, we could see some decent rainfall totals around here. Some indications are up to an inch potentially around San Antonio. Uh, once this is all said and done, this whole event, and then maybe some bigger numbers off east. Forecast for today, up around 74 for a high. We'll call it mostly cloudy across the board. And then uh, 72 on Tuesday, breezy. 70% chance of showers and storms Wednesday. And then some lingering showers and maybe a little bit of a wintry mix Thursday morning. 40% chance of rain. By the time we welcome in the new year, though, things should be clearing out. We drop down to 31 and then 57 for New Year's Day. David. And I don't want to douse anybody's plans for New Year's Eve, but this is not an excuse to go out and shoot off fireworks everywhere because it's still going to be dry. It's we're still going to finish the year well below yeah. average. So. Yeah. All right, Justin, thanks. The Neverland Ranch has a new owner. How much the property sold for coming up in today's Hollywood Minute. Wonder Woman 1984 debuted at number one at the box office Christmas weekend, and now it's official. Another Wonder Woman movie is on the way. Warner Brothers just fast-tracked a third Wonder Woman installment, and both leading lady Gal Gadot and writer-director Patty Jenkins are set to return. No word yet on when it'll arrive. We are left to wonder. 22 has been at the U Seminar for quite some time and has had such notable mentors as Gandhi, Abraham Lincoln, and Mother Teresa. <laughs> I made her cry. Ignore that. Pixar Soul is streaming now on Disney Plus and co-stars Tina Fey as the voice of the unborn Soul 22, a character who goes to great lengths to avoid being born. She is so cute and she changes so much and, you know, uh, is so expressive. And that really is at least 80% the animators building that performance. But um, yeah, I think she she wears you out. If she would she would wear you out to spend a whole day with 22.
Michael Jackson's Neverland Ranch just sold to billionaire businessman Ron Burkle for $22 million, according to the Wall Street Journal. The late pop icon purchased the ranch for $19.5 million back in the late 80s, and its asking price was as high as $100 million in 2014. Sounds like a great deal for Burkle. You just can't beat it. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. America's largest indoor water park resort now open in Round Rock. Mike? Fiona and the SA Live team take us there today in a holiday show on the go. Lots of fun, guys. Well, we are here in Round Rock at Palahar Resorts and Conventions. And let me tell you, this place is brand new and there's so much family fun to be had. It is America's largest indoor water park resort. And I got to tell you, she ain't kidding about that. You have to be in here to see it to believe it, how huge this is. There's also an indoor amusement park. There's indoor gaming, a bowling alley, and that's just for the kids. So much to do for the grownups too. Oh yes, there are, because guess what, grownups? You can play here too. They have a swim up bar called The Grotto. They've got great dining. They've got great live music venues, and they even have a hidden speakeasy. And if you need the password, you're gonna have to hit us up. Give me the password. What is the password? We're going to find out the password and we're going to show it to you all coming up in the next hour of SA Live. Stick around.